Greetings guys, got uh, projects all over the place today. It's a gorgeous day for working on arcades, I would say. Um, that is the Qbert for Tim Whitaker that just got dropped off. Uh, Dane dropped it off to me. Supposedly it is unsalvageable, but we'll see about that. It's actually got amazing side art on it. And then uh, I got uh, Williams. I got some Bondo drying on that right there. So I figured while that's going, I'm working on the Donkey Kong uh, project for a client. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Uh, I got this uh, cab from Jen Hall, and she got it from somebody. I can't remember, but she built a new base for me. I just put that on, and uh, she does amazing work. It is amazing. But the weird thing is, it's got a notch cut out in the front, and then it's all right in the back, and then it angles up. So I don't know why it was cut out like that. But uh, what I'm going to do is just cut out a full strip. And I'm going to biscuit, uh, join it, and um, go ahead and get some Craig jig on there to pull it tight, put a nice brand new piece. And uh, I'm finding that's a lot easier than trying to do all sorts of bondo work. I mean, you would could not bondo all that. I mean, it's a huge, huge gap there. And I, I definitely could not build that out of bondo. So we're going to cut a new piece, put it right across, and uh, then you just got this tiny little hairline seam that you're going to have to do. So uh, we're going to do that now. Okay, first step on uh, cutting this out, obviously I couldn't measure from the bottom because I'd get a different height at every single one. And this is the most important thing, you got to make sure your line is dead straight. So what I did is I pulled the tape from the top because it's square on the top, brought it down to here at uh, 58 and a half inches. Gives me a little inch over so I can go ahead and have room to do this. And uh, drew a line all the way across with a level. And then the next thing is you got to set the depth of your blade and make sure... That's hard to see there. You just want to go as deep as the actual wood. Um, so what I did is I just hooked it up right here and went so it sat flush. And then you can see the blade will only cut uh, that deep because you don't want to go too deep or else you'll start cutting into the front here once you come out the other side. So we're going to go ahead and cut this piece out and we'll go from there. All right, the one last thing that is imperative is this line needs to be straight. Um, cause you got to cut the piece and have it be exactly straight or you're going to have all these gaps that you're going to have to fill and everything. And we want to try to get it as tight as possible, like a piece of paper, um, thin. So what I do on these ones where it's random, I already picked out, I know where the line is. I know where I got to cut. So what I'm going to do is clamp this piece of wood as a guide and then the saw will stay straight and cut that perfectly. You can freehand it if you're awesome. I'm not awesome and I don't want to take the risk. Um, so to get that measurement, all you got to do is measure from your blade to the outside of your guard. I'll try to do this one-handed. So measure the distance from your blade to the outside of your guard. And we're a little more than, a little more than four and a half, it looks to the outside. So it's like four half and an eighth, I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll tweak it out when I got two hands. But that's how far I will set this up, is that same distance, and then I'll know that the blade will ride right down that line and be cut perfect. Okay, I got the wood clamped in place. It is exactly the width from the outside of the blade. Well, actually the inside of the blade to the outside of the fence, which will ride right down the edge of this to keep that cut exactly straight. Uh, also, another thing you want to do is make sure your clamps are on the right side. If they were over here, I would hit them and, you know, you'd get a big wobble in the thing. So make sure you put your clamps facing the correct way and we're going to go ahead and cut it. So we went ahead and cut it, and as you can see, the line that I drew, it went straight down it, and it looks good. So the next thing is, we're going to go ahead and pry up this piece. Alright, I got it all pried up, and uh, this is the side. We can clean this all up just with a razor blade, that's like literally paper thin. You probably won't even feel it or see it, yeah, see, I just put it, pushed it back. Uh, I got a couple screws here, we got to go ahead and screw those out from the inside. And then uh, back here, you got a little bit of a problem. What I do is I just cut this off. 
Um, the original cabinet had like a mortise and tenon joint where this would fit in there, but you have to cut it so small, like that's like an eighth of an inch. So to me, I just cut it flush straight across here with the rest of it and, uh, and then just do the board all the way over. And then from the inside, I can go ahead and hit it with a Craig jig to pull it back in. Um, it's not going to do anything structurally, but it will be just 10 times easier to do. Um, so I'm going to get this all cleaned up and then we'll start measuring for the new piece. Got it all cleaned up, got all the screws out, sanded it down so it's nice and flat, sanded this edge so it's nice and smooth so we got a good fit when we go ahead and do the biscuit joint. Um, next step is going to be go ahead and, and carefully measure that exact distance. It'll be exactly the same because we took all the precautions in the, uh, in the actual setup of this. So we're going to go ahead and cut that piece out of a fresh piece of, of birch, that thickness. And uh, the important thing is, is the wood grain. Make sure that you do the wood grain in the same direction. You're not going to be able to tell from out here, but look inside the cabinet. Most cabinets go up and down, except for the fronts normally go uh, vertically. So, or horizontally, I mean, it's laying on its side. So, um, horizontally and vertically normally on the sides, but just look on the inside. Most of them are unpainted and you'll be able to tell. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut it with the wood grain in the same actual uh, direction and then we'll go ahead and get it biscuited up and put in okay went ahead and measured and it's about a 16th inch off i think the cabinet's just tweaked a little bit uh so the happy medium between the two is five inches um so i'm using that craig rip cut again i'm telling you i love this tool so it's like 30 bucks at lowe's you can get it went ahead and set it exactly if you can see set exactly at five inches and that guide will just go down the factory cut piece so we know we got an exactly square. I got a uh, half inch birch that we're going to use for this and it's in the white right uh, grain direction because this piece will get turned. So I'll cut the strip out and then we'll test fit it. We're back. We got the five inch piece cut and we're going to go ahead and test fit it now. And it looks pretty good, man. So this back piece here will stay square. And what we'll do here, Nintendo's actually come kind of at a little angle around here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll cut it to this outmost because we know, as you can see, the angle's kind of coming down. We'll continue that down. But what I'll do is I'll mark my outside thing and then I'll go ahead and hold it up to one of my other Nintendo cabinets that are done. All right, last part, I decided to go ahead and trace out uh, the rest of the cabinet. So as you can see, we got the correct angle. It continues down. And then loops around and then uh, once I bondo this you won't even see that edge anymore we'll just fade it we'll fade it from about probably right here and then just bring it down here a nice smooth fade and then lots of primer and it will look amazing so that's how you restore a side of a beat-up Nintendo cabinet <laughs> 